Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, December 5th, 2013. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, in a clear case of buyer's remorse, most under 25 favor throwing Obama out of office. Then, do protesters for a rise in wages really understand why they're getting poor? And Obama turns to crowdsourcing contests to develop his propaganda. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. We'll bring public affordable care and don't worry about the price tag. So I'm going to need you all to spread the word about how the Affordable Care Act really works. If you're a student body president, set up a conference on campus. Uh, if you work at a nonprofit, uh, open your doors and use your email list to help people learn the facts. If you've got a radio show, spread the word on air. If you're a bartender, have a happy hour. <laughs> Post something on your Facebook or uh, Instagram. You can tweet using the hashtag get covered. Do whatever it takes to make sure people have the information they need to make the decision that's right for them. That was President Obama speaking to a group of young millennial activists at the White House. This is all part of a three-week push to get people back to the exchanges. And of course, the most important people that they need to sign up in order to make the Affordable Care Act work are the young and healthy. And that's why the Obama administration has spent so much money trying to propagate to the youth via funnier die campaigns, Hollywood has included health insurance subplots in their TV shows, and the DHS even put out a music contest to encourage young people to produce pro-Obamacare music videos, and they finally picked a winner. Don't need a lot of money, money, money to stay young and healthy, healthy, healthy. We just want to make it more fair with affordable health care. Ain't about the Cha-ching, cha-ching, ain't about the, yeah. Blah bling, blah bling, affordable care act. Don't worry about the price tag. <laughs> That's right. The winner of that music video is encouraging her peers to just forget about the price tag of the Affordable Care Act and just sign up. It's not a joke. Never mind that you are probably facing insurmountable student loan debt and you probably can't get a job once you graduate. Just, just pay it and shut up. Now, Obama probably thought that that cute girl with the great voice was going to give him a little street cred and an edge in the race to get millennials back onto the exchanges. But that might prove to be an uphill battle for the president because recent polls are showing that young people are abandoning Obamacare and his signature achievement. The most startling finding of Harvard University's Institute of Politics, a majority of Americans under age 25 would favor throwing Obama out of office. The survey was part of a unique 13-year study of the attitudes of young adults, and it finds that America's rising generation is worried about its future, disillusioned with the U.S. political system, strongly opposed to the government's domestic surveillance apparatus, and drifting away from both major parties. Young Americans hold the president, Congress, and the federal government in less esteem almost by the day. And that actually sounds like just what's needed in this country to get the youth to start a revolution. And with that being said, of course, that's why the Obama administration is encouraging his youth brigade to get out there and propagandize to the youth. And a young liberal group is doing just that. Think again. Katniss's father was killed in a mining accident. If he had union protection, that never would have happened. In the wake of her husband's death, Katniss's mom had no access to therapy and fell into a deep depression, which cost her her job causing the family to starve because the capital provides no food stamps. Like it or not, the Hunger Games are real. President Snow's 1% wants to cut life-saving programs while using their glamour to distract us. The Harry Potter Alliance is a group that's trying to push a progressive agenda by politicizing Hunger Games fans. Now, the campaign aims to inspire the youth to get off their phones and start a revolution by tackling issues of the 12 districts, such as health care access, homelessness, voting access, unemployment, and food security. 
that sounds legit, but the, the drive says that they're really trying to push the main theme of the hum Hunger Games, which is income inequality. Hmm, where have I heard that before? But this increasing inequality is most pronounced in our country. Now, the idea that so many children are born into poverty in the wealthiest nation on earth is heartbreaking enough. But the idea that a child may never be able to escape that poverty because she lacks a decent education or health care or a community that views her future as their own, that should offend all of us. And it should compel us to action. We are a better country than this. Now, conservative fans of the books and films are saying that the Alliance is willfully ignoring the real antagonist of that movie, which is the totalitarian government. They say by pushing Obama's message on income equality, they're, they're missing the, the danger there, the real warning of having an Orwellian government that controls the food stamps and the access to health care and applies pressure on them via the good guy unions. So... They're basically trying to get the youth to demand more government, more control. <laughs> so, of course, that is all part of the New World Order master plan to dupe you into demanding more government control in the name of humanitarianism. So I am going to read a little excerpt from what could have uh, inspired the Hunger Games. I know Alex Jones says this is what helped crystallize his awakening. None dare call it a conspiracy by Gary Allen. We do sell this at the InfoWars store. It says, what we are witnessing is the communist tactic of pressure from above and pressure from below. The American middle class is being squeezed to death by a vice. The, we do see these young groups in the streets trying to be revolutionary groups, and virtually all members of these groups sincerely believe that they are fighting the establishment. In reality, they are an indispensable ally of the establishment in fastening socialism on all of us. The naive radicals think that under socialism, the people will run everything. Actually, it will be a clique of insiders in total control, consolidating and controlling all wealth. So there you can see that lovely diagram of the vice there. We've got the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, pressuring the middle class and the unions and youth groups there are pressuring from below. So that's the trick. Don't be duped into that. All these youth groups are part of this effort and they're, they're totally helping the very establishment that they are trying to stop. But if you really want to stop income equality, you have to go to the root of the problem. And that's that our presidents keep shipping all of our jobs overseas with these trade agreements like NAFTA and the TPP that our beloved dictator is now trying to fast track. And if people don't cut this off before it gets even worse, I am afraid that those people that are out there fighting for income equality and to raise the minimum wage are just gonna continue to find themselves in a Walmart economy. Excuse me, sir. What brings you out here today? I come here uh, with the Workers' Defense Project in solidarity with the 5 for 15 campaign. Do you think it may be more effective to maybe have these type of protests at the Federal Reserve? Um, not instead, but in addition to this, I agree. Jakari, ask him if he knows anything about the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Sir, have you ever heard of the Trans-Pacific Partnership? Yes. Okay, can you okay. tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, as uh, someone uh, from, I'm from Mexico, and seeing how the NAFTA devastated our country, I just am really terrified of, about how it's trans-Pacific. Trans glad you brought up NAFTA, because a lot of people don't know about this NAFTA thing, the NAFTA superhighway. GMOs, do you think GMOs is maybe affecting things? They're in a big way, in a big way. I, I personally, I'm not a scientist, so I didn't study it, but I've done a little research on the web and looked some stuff up, and apparently they're very bad for you. Some very educated people uh, It's happy to see, you know, guys know about GMO, guys know about the NAFTA superhighway and things such as that. These aren't just people looking for more money, you know, they're interested in things like the Federal Reserve, they're interested in things like healthier food. So hopefully, you know, these guys can get a raise, but also hopefully we can get these guys outside of a, a Federal Reserve building. And if you need any more proof of what the establishment thinks of your little millennial revolution, just ask 10-year-old Johnny Jones. He was suspended from school and threatened with expulsion for firing a make-believe arrow at a classmate. 
Johnny found himself in trouble after violating the school's zero-tolerance policy on weapons by miming the action of shooting an arrow from a bow using only his hands. So we can call for a Katniss-led revolution. Just don't act like her. We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salads, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. So forget what you have heard about aspartame. Now it's good for you, according to this really pathetic excuse for a test study. Human guinea pigs were fed snack bars, some of which contained the sweetener and some that didn't. The study recruited 50 people who had reported reactions in the past after consuming aspartame. The investigation found that no evidence of harm in, in either of those groups. So that prompted the Food Standards Agency to announce that as a result of the British research, the Committee on Toxicity had decided there is no need to ban or control the sale or consumption of the sweetener, saying... The expert committee concluded that the results presented did not indicate any need for action to protect the health of the public. And despite concluding that there is no reason to protect consumers, the FSA said that the committee had not actually carried out an overall safety evaluation of aspartame. So there you go. As, as long as your studies do not support the uh, Monsanto-produced aspartame, then they're just going to throw your studies out. But if, if they do, and they're not even overall safely tested, those results will stand. Much like those uh, GMO corn studies that they did with those rats that had all the tumors, those are now having to be retracted as well. And that is, of course, in contrast to what other studies have found, like this one a citizen scientist conducted over the course of two and a half years, and she observed that 67% of her female rats developed tumors the size of golf balls or greater, and 23% of the males in that study developed tumors as well. Those results, of course, coincide with the complaints that the FDA receives, which are registered mainly with 77% of those complaints being female. So, of course, any test that doesn't promote aspartame or GMO, both of which are linked to Monsanto, by the way, anything that's going to say that, that those are bad for you and that they're not safe to consume, those tests are invalid. 
But Monsanto, of course, using those same rats, their test was accepted to show the safety of GMOs, even though the rats were only tested for 90 days. All right, well, stick around because after the break, David Knight sits down with Mike Meharry of the 10th Amendment Center. And then, of course, as always, we've got some goodies after the show. John Bowne has a special report, and we've got an oldie but goodie from the vault with Alex Jones. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other members of the fluorine family that are added to Western water supplies are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the people that drink it. So the question is, why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple, dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We developed the fluoride shield to be the highest quality, highest standards because I use it every day and my family uses it every single day. Let's take a closer look at the ingredients that make up this special proprietary formula. Tamarind has been celebrated for its ability to immobilize toxic fluoride residues, while zeolites have a long history of attracting and holding toxic compounds. Enter fulvic acid, an excellent cleansing agent. Then we added the highest quality shilaji, a rare compound that is collected from the high mountains of the Himalayas. We topped it all off with the powerhouse herb cilantro, that is intended to mobilize fluoride and other dangerous compounds for removal from the body. And the final touch to energize this formula is our proprietary nascent iodine. And as always, consult your physician as well because that is important. And finally, Fluoride Shield, Survival Shield, and all the products at InfoWarsLife.com grew out of my quest to try to find the very best compounds from God's cornucopia to protect myself and my family. And from our research, I believe we are bringing you the best, highest quality products. And you have that commitment from Alex Jones and the entire InfoWars crew. Well, we all know what a burden the federal government has become, especially when it comes to the NSA. Not only do they steal our money, but they also steal our privacy. And it's a particular burden for the people in the community where the new Utah Data Center has been built. Now, there's a campaign to try to stop that. It's called Off Now, the Off Now Coalition. It was top linked on the Drudge Report last night. And we have a spokesperson for that. It's Mike Meharry with the 10th Amendment Center. And he's going to tell us what the problem is in the Utah community and what they're planning to do about it. Welcome, Mike. Thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. You talk about stealing our privacy, they're stealing our money, and now we find out they're stealing water too. Massive uh, amounts. Massive amounts yeah. of water, absolutely. Uh, the other day, uh, it was over the weekend actually, the Salt Lake Tribune ran a story outlining the sweetheart deal that the city of Bluffdale gave the NSA. Uh, basically, it's paying a rate underneath what is the state average for water. Uh, they also did a nice bond issue to do infrastructure yeah. and uh, get the water up there to them. And of course, you know, they use the excuse, oh, this is for economic development, which I think is ridiculous. I mean, can you imagine if this was like the 1940s and they had a, a camp up there where they had Japanese Americans locked up behind wire and, and they said, oh, we're going to supply these guys all kinds of stuff because it's good for economic development. You know, that to me, that's good analogy. Just, yeah, yeah. What it's really doing is, is economically developing the careers of those people who gave them the sweetheart deals. They're going to be loved by the NSA and the federal government, and they're probably going to get some nice, cushy jobs out of this, don't you think? Exactly. Well, and I wouldn't be surprised. Apparently, the, the area that the water infrastructure runs through is prime for development. So it would be interesting to see how many people have their hands in uh, land deals and, and whatnot through there now that they can get the water. But we find this offensive. We find it offensive from a constitutional standpoint that the NSA 
absolutely ignores the Fourth Amendment. We know this from all of the documents that Snowden has leaked. We know that they abuse the information. We know that they've even gone as far as to use it to spy on their girlfriends and whatnot. And and that's what we know. I mean, who knows what we don't know? Mm -hmm. So we have decided that we've got to do something, and we're not going to be able to count on Congress. Congress isn't going to do anything. Any bill that goes through the Senate is going to have to go through Dianne Feinstein's committee, and she's all for this. I mean, she thinks this is the best thing since sliced bread. We can't depend on the judges to do anything about it. They almost always defer to the federal government when you start talking about national security. Well, you've also got, don't forget Mike Rogers in the House. Well, he's a big cheerleader. He goes around with Feinstein as a dog and pony. Mm -hmm. you got the Democrat, the Republican, both pushing the security state. Absolutely. And, and to be honest with you, most of the Congress people and senators are, are in mm-hmm. that camp. So if we're going to do something about it, we're going to have to bypass all of that. And we have realized that we have an opportunity at the state level to do things that can at least inhibit the ability of the NSA to operate and unconstitutionally gather data on Americans. And we call this the Off Now Coalition. It's not just the 10th Amendment Center. It's a, it's a range of coalition partners that spans the political spectrum. Uh, the Bill of Rights Defense Committee, for one, is, is a strong part partner with us. And we're working together to develop a plan to stop NSA spying, not only in Utah, but throughout the United States with state and local activism. And one piece of this pie is the Fourth Amendment Protection Act. And that's the piece of legislation that, that we're pushing in not only Utah, but also in other states to kick back, push back, kick out, stop NSA spying. And let me run through real quick the basic mm-hmm. four pieces of this pie that will work together to hinder the NSA's operation. Number one, it prohibits any material support from the state or local governments to the NSA. That means that when the city of Bluffdale, which is a subdivision of the state of Utah, it's part of the state of Utah, when they create a contract with this NSA, the state has the power to say, you know what, we are not going to allow you to do this. Cities are allowed to sell utilities or have utilities for a local need, but they're subject to general rules for the protection of the community. So the state can simply say, you know what, we believe it's for the protection of all Utahns that we do not allow the NSA to spy on our citizens. So essentially, with this bill, the state will have the power to turn off the water at the NSA. And this is not only good for Utah. We have data centers that are being planned in Texas. We have a big listening station in Washington State. We can imply this in any state where the NSA wants to go, and we can use it to cut off important resources to them. So that's the first step of it. And that's the part that everybody's paying attention to today because of the report from the U.S. News that was linked on Drudge. But there's three other pieces that are very important to this as well. The second part is dealing with data sharing. We know from Snowden's leaked documents that the NSA gathers information and then distributes to state and local law enforcement. State and local law enforcement use this for investigations, and these investigations have absolutely nothing to do with terrorism. Most of it's war on drugs stuff. Mm -hmm. So this bill would make any information that's gathered unconstitutionally without a warrant inadmissible in state court. So that makes this data that is being fed down through these fusion centers and through these special secret organizations to the state, it makes it useless and inadmissible in court. Third piece of the pie is dealing with education system. We have 166 universities in the United States right now that have partnerships with the NSA, either as recruiting grounds or doing research or both. Obviously, a state-run school, the states have power over the person, those state schools and the power the state can essentially say, if you're going to have a partnership with the NSA, we're going to cut your funding. So we can nip this in the bud so we don't have NSA spies going around and, and recruiting our kids to uh, you know, spy on their parents, essentially. And then the final piece of the puzzle is dealing with corporate entities. Of course, a lot of places, they don't have city uh, utilities. They have private companies. What we can do there is the state can forbid those private companies, those corporations, from being able to do business with the state or local government in any way if they're doing business with the NSA. So in other words, they'd be ineligible to uh, bid for any contracts at the state or local level. So we've got these four pieces of the pie that can work together to help hinder NSA spying. Well, that's an excellent approach, uh, especially this material support. I hope the people in Bluffdale understand that they're, have, they're being charged 50 percent more than the NSA for their water. And of course, that's in an area where water is a very, very important commodity. That's a very, very good point. And it's interesting, as, as we've developed this coalition, we've found a lot of support from environmental groups mm-hmm. because they recognize that the squandering of resources that's yes. being 
done here. Water is huge. I mean, it's it's a necessity for agriculture. It's a necessity for all kinds of things. And for the the NSA, they estimate that this thing, once it's fully operational, will use 1.7 million gallons of water every single day. That's an astonishing amount of water. It is, and especially in an area where water is such a scarce resource. It's hard to even fathom that, but especially there. Exactly. And I want to add one more thing. I think it's important for people to understand. There's people out there that are watching this, and they're going to say, oh, oh, whoa, whoa, the state can't do that. The federal government's supreme, and, and the federal government is just going to make them do it anyway. Well, if you look at the legal history, if you look at even the Supreme Court decisions, they support this idea, what is called the anti-commandeering doctrine. And basically, it's based on four primary Supreme Court cases that date all the way back to 1842. And essentially, what they together say is that the federal government cannot commandeer state or local governments to enforce or enact their federal laws. So essentially, the states can say, you know what, if you want to do this, you have to do it on your own. We do not legally have to provide you any materials support. And that's backed up in court. I mean, this isn't even questionable. Oh, yeah. Well, the Tenth Amendment is, as you know, with the Tenth Amendment Center is very clear. The whole Bill of Rights is basically set there to walk back any assumption that the government has that they've got carte blanche to move everywhere. And they said, no, you got specifically or prohibited from doing these things. And by the way, if we left something out, we're reserving all that for the people in the state. So that, that's really clear. I haven't seen your legislation. I know that when they go out and they get these search warrants, one of the fantasies that they like to use is the fact that if you hand this over to a third party, in other words, a private corporation like Google, now that Google can hand that data over to you because that's their data. They can just voluntarily hand, hand that over. So I hope there's some, some penalties in there and some prohibitions against that kind of fantasy. That's how they get around these search warrants everywhere. Well, yeah, that's true, and, and that's obviously absurd. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a, it's legal wrangling to yes. to circumvent the Constitution, and I think any any American who understands the Constitution is appalled by that that very idea. And this bill it doesn't really specifically deal with that, but essentially what we're doing is we're taking infrastructure out from underneath them. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to gather the data in the first state. I mean, in the first place, they don't have any water. They can't cool their computers. Yes. They can't use the data that they have. And you know, in a at a state level, if a company like Google or Verizon or any of these big companies, we find that they're doing business with the NSA. The state could have some penalties and whatnot for their operation in the state. Again, keeping them from having any, you know, imagine for a minute Google with all the software and the stuff that they want to sell, and all of a sudden they have no ability to, to bid any projects in the state of Washington, and then you add the state of Utah, and then you add the state of Arizona, and you get 20, 25, 30 states that are all doing the same thing. Then this becomes very, very significant. And James Madison, he actually laid out this foundation in Federalist 46. He said, when there's an unwarrantable measure, and he actually said even a warrantable measure that unpopular. He said the, the means of opposition are powerful and at hand. And one of the things that he lists as a means of oppos opposition is refusal to cooperate with officers of the union. So this is, a, Excellent this is a blueprint that was laid out before the Constitution was even ratified. The yes. states were always yes. intended to be a check on federal power. It's a decentralization. And that's really, to me, that's the key. I don't understand people who think government monopoly is a good thing and yet would scream bloody murder at Walmart or, you know, if, if uh, <laughs> Kroger That's all of a true. sudden had the monopoly on all groceries in the entire United States. They Excellent point, Mike. Well, we're out of time. It's a very, very important campaign. I hope people will get involved. That's the Turn It Off, or sorry, Off Now Coalition. Tell us uh, the website address of that one more time. It's very simple, offnow.org, all put together. And Great. you'll find all kinds of information and ways to get involved. Please Excellent strategy. Thank you for doing that. Very important for people to get involved and put pressure on their state legislators. Thank you so much, Mike. Thanks Mike for Mahari, 10th Amendment Center. Thank you. Well, that's a great idea, a very effective strategy, a very legal strategy, but it needs you to stand with them. You need to stand up to the government. I'm encouraged when I see people standing up to the government like these demonstrations in the Ukraine where they're, the people have a bulldozer and the police are backing down. You have to stand in mass. You have to stand up for your rights. But you also need to know what your rights are. One of the ways that you can learn about that is to look at the excellent documentary that we sell here at InfoWarsStore.com put out by the Tenth Amendment Center called Nullification. It'll tell you. It'll tell your friends. You can pass this around in a DVD format. It'll tell your friends all they need to know about the legal strategies of state nullification, a very in-depth, fascinating documentary. You need to educate yourself and educate others. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern.
Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Nelson Mandela, the great South African civil rights leader and father of South Africa, has passed away at the age of 95. But before we spend the next few days praising his revolution from a jail cell, and Obama rolls out the comparison of Mandela to George Washington again. Obama compares Nelson Mandela to George Washington. I have never seen something that disgusting, ladies and gentlemen. Nelson Mandela, they tagged on to the anti-apartheid movement, which I think was good. He was a hardcore communist mass bomber. His wife says her favorite thing to do is hang tires over children's heads and necklace them. Let's get our facts straight. Mandela was a member of the South African Communist Party. He co-founded Amkhanto Wei Sizwe, a terrorist organization that killed civilians, including children. Fast food outlets and supermarkets were favored targets. In addition to terrorist bombings, the military wing of the African National Congress tortured and executed suspected government agents. The ruling ANC defines itself as a disciplined force of the left. In pursuit of the hidden truth, for Infowars.com, John Bowne reporting. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancakes. Well, pancaking almost like a precision implosion. Reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Societies don't change. Whether it was the Roman Empire or Nazi Germany, the population is obsessed with sports and petty celebrities. And the United States is no different. MSNBC, the New York Times, they're all reporting that we are going into a depression, one of the greatest depressions in world history. And our decadent, slob-like public, and that's not everyone, but large percentages of the public could care less. They're not involved in their communities. We've got 46 states on the verge of bankruptcy. The government's raising taxes on every level. The border with Mexico is collapsing. Mexico has collapsed. And the public doesn't care because the media has set the agenda. And they tell you to care about LeBron James and his decision. And he's playing into it and is going to announce his stupid decision. It doesn't matter what basketball team he goes to. This is a distraction by design. We have the governor of the state he's currently living in in a bizarre we are LeBron, we are the world literal worship fest with hundreds of celebrities. This is sickening. Hey, LeBron. The Ohio governor begging and 
pleading on television and serenading LeBron James with hundreds of other celebrities when Ohio was one of the states slated to go completely bankrupt. We're going into a depression. They're about to launch World War III with Iran openly. Fox News is reporting as if it's a good thing in New York State and Illinois that troops have helped arrest thousands of citizens and are doing gun sweeps in people's homes and searching people's cars. We're going in to martial law. Offshore banks have overthrown the U.S. They've stolen tens of trillions of dollars, like we're some third world country they're looting. Everything's going to hell in a handbasket. So if you want to know why your children have no future, if you want to know why you're bankrupt, if you want to know why you're in debt, if you want to know why you have no future and have lost your job or are getting your pay cut, it's because your priorities are wrong. It's because you let that idiot box the television program you since the days that your mother and father set you in front of the TV for 12 hours a day in your crap-filled diapers. It's not too late to admit we're a sick, decadent, degenerate society crumbling. We are Rome. It's 410. We're about to collapse, ladies and gentlemen. I know you won't know. You know about LeBron James. You don't know 410 is when Rome completely fell to Alaric, the Visigoth leader. You better learn history. This is dangerous. Don't say you weren't warned. The globalist engineers... The globalist social engineers look at you and how pathetic you are and how the whole world is waiting to see where LeBron James goes. The social controllers look at you and see how you're obsessed with LeBron James. And they decide, we got a bunch of schmucks. We've got a bunch of idiots. we got a bunch of morons right where we want them. Let's destroy their society. Let's loot it. Let's pass carbon taxes. Let's expand NAFTA and GATT. Let's announce an end to the dollar as the global reserve currency. Do you know what that means? We've already lost almost all our industry. We're already in a depression. When they get rid of the dollar as the world reserve currency, your life as you know it is officially over. You're going to be a third world slave like they are in Mexico or Nigeria. And you know what? Those people down there at least know why they're slaves. You are so stupid and so focused on crap, you'll probably still be talking about Lindsay Lohan when you're living as a homeless person on the street. My friends, we've got to set our priorities and set them now. Liberty or tyranny? You've got to wake up and decide what is important to you, saving our republic, stopping the globalist takeover, or knowing all the mindless trivia about LeBron James and Lindsay Lohan. There isn't much more time. I'm begging you to ask yourselves to look in the mirror and really realize how sick this is. It's not bad to like a basketball game, but it is mentally ill and sick to buy into this manufactured hype and to have government officials that should be working for the people sitting there in these disgusting media spectacles worshiping somebody. Our role models, our icons, the people that our children look up to and model themselves after are not inventors and scientists and trailblazers anymore. That's why America's gone from the greatest to the most pathetic in every statistical analysis you look at. And it's only getting worse. We still got a lot of great people in this country. But with Pete Rose and LeBron James and Michael Vick uh, being our heroes, we're a joke. We're clowns. They've taken our heroes and our role models away. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been warned. And this whole LeBron James decision means absolutely nothing. This obsession with petty issues of little or no significance is the modern version of bread and circus. It is the opium of the masses. And it's why... We are dumbed down slaves with no future if we don't wake up. You have been warned. LeBron came with a, a big time focus. LeBron James. More on LeBron. I asked LeBron if his focus has reached a new high. His eyes bored into me as he said, absolutely.